Jack. Hello, Dan. How are you? Good. Hello, Maya. Hello, Tom. How are things? Fine, fine. Good. The book is ready. It's not. <laughs> oh, I put really? it on your desk. Oh, come on. Let's have a look. Ah, now that looks all right. I see. <laughs> well, lovely. Congratulations, Maya. Glad you like it, Tom. And you, Harry? Thanks. I think this calls for a celebration. I, I've got some champagne in the car. I got it for tonight, but if we drink it up, well, my guests can drink beer. <laughs> Harry, get some glass. <laughs> you take that, Ma. I won't be long. Tom's never been on time for an appointment in his life. He has absolutely no consideration for other people. You're not awfully fond of your son, are you, Mr. Collier? Cecilia, if you'd spent the time and money and effort I have to make that young man realize who he is and what he ought to be doing in the world, you'd... You haven't known Tom long. No. Oh, and perhaps from longer experience, who might enlighten her? Well, I presume what Mr. Collier means is that, on ordinary terms, Tom doesn't seem to have got very far. He's wasted his life from the cradle. Ah, oh, it must have been pathetic to see him wasting it at three. I assure you, his genius for it showed even then. I send him to Harvard, and he lasts two years there. I send him to Oxford, and he commutes from Paris. I put him into the bank, and he... The whole world at the feet of that boy, the whole world. And all he's ever done is to run from it. Well, you know, Tom has his own ideas about what he wants to do with his life. Mm. Yes, Regan? A radio message came by phone for him. Oh, thanks. You can leave it here. I'll take care of it. Right. Oh, I... Uh, everything satisfactory? Uh, yes, yes, quite, thanks. Comfortable, miss? Quite, thank you. Like a drink? Anyone? No, no, nothing. We were talking. That's all right. Go right ahead. Make yourselves at home. He'll be right along. The butler? He's charming. He looks like a prize fighter. <laughs> he was. <laughs> there, there now. Don't worry. Tom will be along any second now. Mm, if what I think is true, I hope he never comes along. <laughs> what? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what's in my mind. Heaven knows I don't want it there. That girl he's been living with for the last three years. Uh, just a minute, sir. It's all right, Arthur. Good Jupiter, there's no secret, is it? Who is she, anyway? What is she? An extremely nice girl. Hard-working, talented. She, she draws for one of the fashion magazines. And very successfully. She left three months ago for her magazine's Paris office for an indefinite stay. Oh, maybe she's coming back. What of it, Mr. Collier? What of it? Everything of it. It's like him to marry her. <laughs> I'm surprised he's missed it as long as he has. Well, I've stood for his rowdy friendships. I've put up with his idleness, his ill-mannered insolence. I'm sorry, Mr. Collier. I'll have to ask you to let it go at that. Mm, why so? Because it so happens that I'm why we're here. How's that? It's me Tom's going to marry. And I've heard enough against him to last me quite a while. See, what are you talking about? Marrying. I see, I thought... On June that... 1st, to be exact. He asked you out here to tell you. And I imagine to receive your good wishes. My dear. My dear, I congratulate Tom and myself. And I hope it'll work out for you. I hope he won't be utterly impossible as a husband. He has been at everything else I wanted him to do. I don't agree with you. Tom's the most interesting, most attractive man I've ever known. I consider myself shot with luck. Mm, very loyal. Not at all. I simply believe in him. Not in his so-called past, perhaps. I'm not quite a fool. But certainly in what's to be. Well, faith is a beautiful thing. I think so. Well, if you can make a respectable citizen out of Tom Collier at this date, you'll have nothing but praise from me, my dear. It seems not to occur to you that when Tom has someone who really understands him to work and care for, why... Understands him? Yes, completely. Why, he'll make what you call a respectable citizen of himself. Oh, you think so? I know. And if what you laughingly refer to as my faith is of any use to him... Mm, love will conquer all. Yes, yes, of course. But, but forgive me a few doubts. Oh? How's that, sir? 
darling, I'm coming back. Arrive on Paris at 8 tonight. Much love, Daisy. Well? I know all about her. Did you know she was returning tonight? No. Neither did Tom. Owen, I'd like a few words with you, if Cecilia will pardon us. Certainly. Owen. I meant to tell you on the way over, Owen. But then I couldn't. See, how did it happen? Very suddenly, very sweetly, yesterday. I'm sorry. You asked. If you'll excuse me, I... I think I'll see what Mr. Collier wants. Now get out. Uh, I just wanted to tell you that later. But there's a get, will you? Really? A radio yeah. message come for you. Oh, get out. <laughs> Hello, darling. No, you're late. I'm furious with you. Late? There. Is that all right? That's terrible. I, I've taken up with a thrifty spinster. <laughs> That's all you deserve. Well, where are they, Father and Owen? In the other room. Tell me, darling, did you really say you'd marry me? I'm afraid I did. Oh, heaven help us both. Just this one marriage, please. You know, I haven't been very good about marriage. I was exposed to a very bad case of it as a baby. We must make a grand go of it. Oh, we shall. Never you fear. Well, you, you just do everything I say and it'll be all right. With pleasure, sir. Oh, see, darling, what, what a marvelous object you are. <laughs> oh, I feel good. So do I. Do you? <laughs> My lovely seat. Stop it, Tom. You're embarrassing me. Why? I feel quite naked. You look marvelous. You look I'll have dinner in a couple of minutes, Tom. Here, glasses with ice and run all the way. Right. Did you get your radio message? What message? <laughs> Excuse me. <whistles> Goodbye. Don't tell me if you don't want to. But I do. I'd always intended to at the first opportunity anyway. And suddenly it seems here it is. Well, see, for a long time I've known, known intimately, a girl who's been very important to me. Yes? Daisy's done more for me than anyone in this world. She's the best friend I've got. I believe she always will be. I'd hate terribly to lose her. It, it's been a queer sort of arrangement. Well, no arrangement at all, really. There's never been any idea of marriage between us. Well... Is she attractive, Tom? To me, she is. I don't believe you'd like me half so well if Daisy hadn't knocked some good sense into me. Someone's done a good job of it. I'll tell her that. I sent her a long cable this morning all about us. Of course, she never got it, because this, this came from the boat. She lands tonight. I see. See, we, well, we've been everything possible to each other, of course, but. Yes, Tom. But at the same time, as free as air, I mean, there's never been any feeling of conventional responsibility towards each other involved in it. I can understand that. Can you see? Because I never could. Anyhow, that's, uh, that's how it's been. We haven't been what you'd call in love for a long time now. Does she know that? She knew it first. Well, I, I don't know what more there is to be said about it, except that, that there's no need for you to worry. You won't, will you? Not if you tell me I needn't. Well, I do. And finally, I think she ought to know the news about us pretty promptly. Yes, probably. Well, is, is anything I do about that all right with you? Of course. Thank you, Steve. Oh, hello, Father. Hello, Owen. Evening, Tom. Good evening. 
You said five o'clock. It's seven, and I think... Oh, did I? Is it? Listen, you know, and I want to tell you what this is all about. We know. We've heard. He was abusing you so. I had to tell him. And it didn't discourage you? On the contrary. Oh, stout heart. Huh? Why, uh, thanks very much, sir, but I think I'm the one to be congratulated. Yes, indeed we are. Yes, I'm sure we shall be. Yeah. Hello, Red, there you are, that's the boy. Uh, that's my father over there. Oh, glad to meet you, sir. And my fiancé, Miss Henry. Your... <laughs> Good boy. Thanks, thanks very much. Well, here's how and why and wherefore, and you know where marriages are made. Is, is it all right? Swell. Well, that's splendid. Now, we're all satisfied, aren't we? Yeah. <coughs> yeah, just a moment, Red. Did you put the car away? Say, how many hands have I got? Well, don't. I shall need it. Right. Father. Hmm? I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to do the honors at dinner. Oh, why? How's that? I find I have to go straight back to town. Now, you listen to me. It seems to me extremely important that I should do it at once. In fact, I can't do otherwise. You have the effrontery, the colossal bad taste on the night of celebrating your engagement to a fine, trusting, loyal girl to go from her, your fiancée, to your... Uh, your... Uh... Same old difficulty about words, eh, Father? Never mind, none of them apply to Daisy. Uh, I suppose you know better. If you leave here yes, tonight... Yes, much. Much better. Till tomorrow, my angel. My poor child. I'm sorry, Cecilia. Oh, I think you did exactly right. The mm, beautiful thing, Faith. A beautiful, beautiful thing. Tommy. David. <laughs> I was looking for you at the dark. I'm so sorry. I didn't get your message in time. Oh, come in. All right. Oh, hello, you dear Tom. Hello, Daisy. Now, it seems though I hadn't been away at all. <laughs> Does it? Oh, come sit down. I have so much to tell you, it'll take hours. Ah. Tom. Two of the most exciting things have happened to me. Not one, two. Really? What were they? Oh, I'm bursting with them. <laughs> Daisy, I... <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you tell me. Come on. Well, my heavy sledding ought to be over in a few weeks. By the first of June, anyway. What have you got on the fire? Much? Yes, a good deal. The fact is, I... I we'll I... work day and night until the first of June, and then... and then come to Mexico for a month with Daisy. Oh, I'm dying to go, because... Well, first of all... What? I feel like such a fool. I promise you won't be the word of it to anybody. Mm -hmm. Tom, I think I can paint. <laughs> well, that's no surprise. I've always thought you could... Well, then you've always been wrong because it's new. It's just since the last two months. I believe if I work my eyes out and my fingers to the bone that someday I may really paint. Mm. You must be hard on me now. No parties, no playing around, just work. And you mustn't let me show until you know I'm ready to. Is that agreed? All right. You got a funny instinct about those things, and I'm counting on you. Uh -huh. That's the first thing. As for the second thing... Well. No, I... Suddenly, I, I feel shy with you. Oh, I don't like it. I don't like it a bit. It's, uh, been a long time, Daisy. Too long. Perhaps I'd better wait to tell you the second thing. No. Tell me now. Oh, my dear, what's wrong with us? Come here to me. That's better. I don't feel it so much now. You're a free man, you know, Tommy. Always have been with me. No questions asked. But, oh, please, Mexico and June together, because, listen... No, don't look at me. Look the other way. On the boat coming over, the sweetest small boy, about two, and I got crazy about him, and I want one. I want one badly. So will you please be good enough to marry me? Oh, as you always used to say you wanted to, only I wouldn't let you. And... 
Well, needn't be terribly serious. It's not a life sentence, you know. Just for a little while, if you like. Would be such a dirty trick on him if we didn't. Then after I get my stuff through for the July issue, Mexico for a month together. Oh, I love you so much. I was a fool ever to think I didn't. So come on, Tommy. Be a good sport and, and give me a cigarette. Daisy. All right, never mind. Let's forget all about it. That is a foul necktie you've got on the car. Daisy, I, I... What is it? Oh, you're going to tell me something terrible. What is it? I'm, I'm going to be married, Daisy. To be... Listen, listen, my darling, you can't care so much. You can't. It's simply that you and I it naturally... It must have happened are... pretty quickly. Yes, it did. A month ago, we hadn't even met. It was a... You can spare me the details, please. I don't even want to know who she is. Who is she? Cecilia Henry, her name is. Behold the bridegroom cometh, and no oil for my lamp as usual. A foolish virgin, me. Well, foolish anyway. When is it to be, soon? About the first of June, we planned. June, oh. Yeah, well, in that case, Mexico would be out. But I never dreamed you... I feel so awful. Remember me, Tom. Daisy, there's to be no nonsense about not seeing each other again as friends or any of that, you know. Oh, but there will be that nonsense. Oh, yes, there'll be that all right. I, I don't understand. I don't see why we shouldn't. I thought for a long time we'd been out of danger so far as... Well, so far as... Wanting each other goes? Well, haven't we? Speak for yourself, Tom. You too, Daisy. You first, I thought. Well, it's true, that side of it was never so much to us. Not in comparison, not... Well, not after those first crazy months. But I, I thought that was natural. I was even glad. Glad that it was other needs that held us together. So closely. Not a claim. Never a claim, but so closely. Tom... Tom, do you have to marry her? I want to marry her. I thought maybe you just wanted her, wanted her most awfully. No, 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 it's more than that, much more. Well, I, I don't see how you can quite tell that. For all our big talk, you know, we do still belong to the animal kingdom. If you knew her, Daisy. Yes, well, I don't, you see. Listen, Daisy, there's no one like you, never will be, I know that. But this, it, it, I don't know, I, I can't tell you. Don't try, don't try, don't try. Goodbye, you Tom Carter. Goodbye? Until when? Doomsday, my darling. What are you talking about? Just that. Now, you listen to me. If you think I'm going to allow two people who mean as much to each other as you and I do to be separated by any such false, ridiculous notion as that, you're mistaken. Just you try it. Tell me goodbye. I'll do nothing of the kind. Oh, yes, you will. You must. You have to. Sharp, decent and clean, no loose ends between us two. But it's not decent, it's soft, it's sentimental. It's the kind of thing you'd never have any use for, taught me never to. Goodbye. I will not say it. Goodbye. No. You must. Listen to me, Daisy, please. And some things of yours that are here, I want you to take them along with you, please. Frank got me a new maid just before I landed. I let Harriet go when I left. Well, the new maid had a swell hunch about us, she did. Some I... shirts and things of yours that were here. She wrapped up in a nice little bundle. Well, she gets the gate for it, the big Swede. I don't believe in this. I don't believe in any of it. Go and get them, will you? Fetch, Thomas. It's quite a neat, tidy little bundle. But if it stays around here, well... I don't quite see myself crying into an old shirt, do you? I've worked to do, my son, a great deal of it. No, won't fetch? Then kindly permit me to... And you will say goodbye to me. You've said it so many times so brightly. Say it this time sadly. 
You will, won't you? We'll make it an unmarried ceremony. To keep everything quite regular. You must take my hand in yours as one splendid gesture. And murmur goodbye, my daisy. Thanks very much. A charming association. And may we never, never meet again so long as we two shall live. Here's the wash back. Now do as Daisy says. And, Congealed. I can't say I envy you and your husband the trip into town. It's not my idea. Well, why do you do it, See, It's so grim. Tom wants to. Oh, such loyalty. It's her first showing, and he thinks for some reason we should be there. Who is she, anyway? An artist. Sage, her name is. Tom says she's good. Oh, well, I suppose publishers have to hobnob with all sorts of queer people. We see few people of any description anymore. Yes. Don't tell me about the hermit life you live. I think the least you could do would be to come to my Sunday breakfast now and then. Oh, tomorrow's will be such fun. Do see. Perhaps we shall. Well, not if you're going tonight. Perhaps we shan't go in tonight. Oh, uh -huh. so that's the way it is. Well, well, well. Ah, with us again. With you again, yes. See, don't you think we'd better be getting underway, dear? Oh, we've got ours. I read the new book you published last week, Tom. Oh, yes? Well, what do you think of it? Superlative, my dear. I was simply ravished. Well, that, that, that's something, isn't it? Isn't he beyond words? You're the world's funniest man. You couldn't possibly be funnier. Ah, uh, you don't know me. Oh, yes, I do. Don't you adore it, see? The book, I mean. I like it very much. In fact, I'm afraid it was I who made Tom take it. And I'm afraid I still think it the worst tripe the Bantam ever published. But, my dear, everyone's simply devouring it. Well, there'll be a lot of sickness this winter. You're so foolish about it, Tom. He'll make enough on that one book to bring out ten he really cares for. Yes, I suppose that's the way it works. Oh, uh, Father called today. What'd he want? He wants us to dine with him on Wednesday and spend the night. Oh, come on, darling. Get us out of it, won't you? Again? Mm. How can I? I don't know. Tell him I'm up to my eyes in work or anything else he won't believe. Take the old car's frozen stiff. Oh, well, I could easily send you in in the closed car. Sammy and I might even join you. Oh, thank you. We, we cannot accept your sacrifice. Really, he's extraordinary. He defeats me. Well, I guess I'd better be barging along, as they say. I, uh, I'm sure it's getting colder by the minute. Yeah, it's almost cold enough to... You know, I, I think we'd best bring the brass monkeys in tonight, don't you? The, uh... <laughs> Good night, C. Good night, Grace. Must you really? Well, uh... Yes, I'm afraid I must. Oh, now don't forget, you're coming to my Sunday breakfast tomorrow. We're having the most amusing people. Of course, that's just what Sunday breakfast needs, isn't it, See, Mind you, the, the coffee must be very hot as well. Good night. Good night. I think that... Good evening. My dear, that desperate butler must embarrass you to death. Not much longer. Tom's promised to fire him tonight if he isn't completely insensible. Good evening, Red. Evening. Yeah, you, you better get to bed, hadn't you? Just where I'm headed. Yeah, just a moment, Red. Now, all right, bring a couple of bottles of beer, will you? Right. What did 
you say to Regan? Regan? He never drinks on duty. Why shouldn't he have the right to get slightly mellow on his one day out? Slightly mellow? Hmm. He can hardly stand. When I said good evening to him, he didn't even answer. Well, maybe he couldn't speak. All he did was to bow, like this, with a foolish grin. So low, he nearly fell over. Well, you know, it's, it's pretty hard to gauge a bow under those conditions. Tom, I think it's selfish of us to keep him. Selfish? Well, we're certainly depriving him of any chance he ever had to make anything of himself. Oh, hang it, see, he broke his hand. He'll never fight again. I don't mean fighting. Well, these, these are hard times. I don't know what else there is for him. Mm. I'll leave it to you. Do as you like about him. And you know, I feel somehow... I feel somehow that Red's good luck for me. He's... I don't know, we understand each other. I'm awfully fond of him. Hmm. You must be, to ruin whatever chance in life he might have. I wouldn't do that to Red, you know I wouldn't. You're doing it, though. What possibly could be more degrading to a man than housework? <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't like to tell you, darling. <laughs> Of course, you know, you're making a regular Simon Legree out of me. Where's my whip? No. It's just that in your delightful, casual way, you've never thought of his side of it. I wouldn't do that to Red. I, I really wouldn't. Ring for him, see. Mm, not me. I've nothing to do with it. Do you have to change, or are you ready? Seemed to me you were unnecessarily rude to Grace. I have to change. Mm -hmm. Now we've got to go to her breakfast in the morning. Honestly, see, all my life I've been trying to get away from her kind of people. Takes all kinds to make a world. Yes, and then what have you got? <laughs> Come on, darling, you go get dressed, yes? I suppose you feel we must go into town tonight? Because why? An exhibit lasts several days, doesn't it? Yes, but I, I want to be there tonight. Tonight's the opening. Besides, they'll all be there tonight. Have you uh, seen any of your old friends lately? No. Why not, dear? Oh, and the uh, girl, Daisy, um, the one who's exhibiting tonight, have you seen her? No. Why not? I thought you felt her friendship was important to you. She won't see me. Won't see you? No. Come on, see, be a good girl. You go up and get dressed. Oh, dear. What's the matter? Nothing. But dear, what, what is it? Well, just this blasted headache. I've had it all day. Oh, what a shame. The cold air will fix that up. It was that that gave it to me. Honestly, Tom, I don't think I can face it. What? Why not send her a wire? Best wishes. That's enough, isn't no, it? No, 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 that wouldn't do. I'm sure she'd be every bit as glad to have a telegram. See, darling, listen, Daisy's been working for years for this. A telegram wouldn't do at all. I've simply got to be there. There's no particular reason why you should go. I can go alone. I'll come. Listen, dear, you... Hmm? Uh, put them down there, Red, will you? Uh, hmm? What? Tell him now. All right. And uh, wait a minute. What's the rush? Stick around. Certainly. Listen, see, if, you're, if you feel tired, you go to bed. No, I'll come. Well, drag up a chair, Red. One more is about all I need. <laughs> you know, this morning, if all the bad heads in the world were put together in a row, my head would have got up and sneered at the rest of them. Well, here's how. How? That's the stuff. <laughs> that builds you up, eh? Yo. Oh. Say. Mm -hmm. Have you seen this one? I shouldn't think so, no. Tell me where to stop and remember the card. Right. Got it? I got it. Where is it? It's gone, all right. Feel in your pocket. Not this time. No? No. 
Is that it? Marvelous. I paid five dollars for that trick. Oh, God. I'll let it go for two ninety-eight. No. Sorry, not interested. Red. Was it cold in town today? I don't envy those guys selling apples on the corners. No, not much of a job that, eh? Women's work. Mm -hmm. Pretty tough times, all right, eh? Say, look here, Tom. What? If I... Nothing. If you're ever hard up, though, you know where to come. That goes both ways. Red, I might just as well tell you right off. What? Nothing. Say, what? how's your father these days? Oh, never better, thanks. <laughs> Red, do you ever think about your future? I guess where I'll go, it'll be plenty hot. I mean... Oh, oh you mean here. Mm. Now, that's a funny thing, because, listen, Tom, maybe I... I'll, I'll let it go. No, but what? Fill her up, will you? Not much of a future in battling, eh, Red? Oh, well... You know, I, I, I'm certainly grateful to you for all you've done. Ah, be still, will you? I am, though. That's fine from you. I'll never forget when I was... And you... Well, well, I'll never forget it. Put it there, old boy. You're the top, boy. I don't know what you think of me when I... When you what? When I... Well, well, what would you say, for instance, if I... Nope, it's no good. Yeah, you're, you're not in any trouble, are you? Trouble? Me? What trouble? Well, then, look here, Regan. Well, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Collier for president, the people's choice. Now, no, listen to me. Wait, wait, no, no, Tom, no, Tom, no, I, I just got to tell I you. Gotta... Don't hold it against me, but I'm, I'm quitting you. I've took another job. You what? Oh, I know what she'll say. Holy cats, man. I couldn't stand it any longer. She don't like my ways. I mean the missus. I get on her nerves. Yeah. Last week, Mo Winters told me he wanted to open a country gym. And would I run it with him? On the order of Muldoon's. But with a little bar attached. And heaven help me, I, I give him a word. I see. Well, what's there in for you, Red? Oh, uh, don't put it that way, Tom. I really want to know. Two hundred a month and a smell at the gate, if any. That's all right. Sounds like a good deal. Let it go. I'll phone no, him. No, 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 no. When'd you start? He wanted me last Wednesday. I've been trying all week to get up the nerve to tell you, but... Mm, well, but how long will it take you to pack? Well, well, there's my hat trunk and my shoe trunk and a trunk for my fancy dress ball clothes. This new leave by noon tomorrow, you understand? Not a minute later. Okay, Chief. I'm sorry you had to take it that way. Oh, don't be a fool. I'm overjoyed for you. Thank you. Absolutely. Here's to the new job. Take it from me, boy. You're the goods. Well, you've got your points, too, you know. Anyhow. Anyhow. Well. <clears throat> You'll explain to the missus? Yes, of course. Tell her I'm sorry. Hope no inconvenience. Yes, but... I, I, I'll explain, Red. So long, Tom. Goodbye, Red. So long, Tom. Goodbye, Red. I'll, I'll give you a ring how it goes. Yes, yes, you do that. That's right. Keep your bib clean. I will, old boy. Good luck, Tom. Tom. Oh, hello. <coughs> Ready? Not quite. Did you tell him? You know, I, I, I miss that guy. I miss having him around. Oh, I know, darling. 
But it's for the best. I'm sure of it. I feel somehow that my luck's going with him. I'm your luck, darling. See, you feel good. Do I, dear? You haven't any clothes on. Go along now, dress. Dress quickly. We've got to run. Come and help me. No. You'd better not. See. Si. Do you remember this negligee? I came across it in the bottom drawer. My spine simply melted. Quebec? Yes. See, si, come here. You'll make us late. What of it? We're late already. We'll miss it. Well, what if we do? Oh, darling, you're the limit. Ten minutes ago, you said... Tom. What, dear? You go in alone. I've decided to stay here. You what? Yes, it's too cold. I'm going to tuck myself in my warm bed and read. Good night, lover. I'll miss you. Look here, I, I'll stay. No, no. Good night, darling. You better take your heavy coat. And keep warm. Uh, hello. I want to send a telegram. <laughs> I would have an exhibition, wouldn't I? Well, if I'm to believe the critics, I ought to be painting signboards. There are no judges of one's work but oneself, Daisy. Oh, I wonder who that is. I'll answer. Hello, Frank. Hello, Tom. Is, is, is Daisy in? Yes. Hello. I think I'll run along, Daisy. No, don't go, Frank. Yes, I must go. Goodbye, Tom. Well, uh, speak to me, somebody, will you? Am I a leper? What would you like me to say? Oh, um... Uh, <clears throat> Take off your coat collar and stay a while, won't you? Thanks, I think I will. Well, it was uh, nice of you to ask me over. Yes, but I didn't, you see. Well, it was nice anyway. Whatever made you think I, I wanted to see you? Nothing, except that I, I wanted to see you. How's, uh, how's it coming? How's what coming? I mean, the job. Job? Oh, the job. Oh, I gave that up last winter. A trifle, uh, shall we say, quixotic of me. Shall we? <laughs> how's Joe's book doing? Haven't you seen him? No. Joe's book is doing fine, thank you. Of course, it can't compare with the magnificent volumes being brought out by your Bantam Press. Indian summer and young ecstasy. Ouch. Oh, what on earth made you take those things on, Tom? Oh, I know, money. Ah, but Daisy, I, I've reformed. You wait till you see the Bantam's new list. I'm waiting.
well. I hear Frank's a hit. She is. I, uh, saw your exhibition today. Oh, did you really? Funny, I missed you. What did you think of it? Well. Oh, tell me. Daisy, I don't think you were ready to show yet. How are the notices? Appalling. I suppose their reasons were all wrong. Yes, of course they were. What were yours? Well, you've been painting less than a year. Yes. And yet you had about 30 canvases to show. 32. An awful lot, Daisy. Then you didn't like any of them? Oh, yes. Well, one I love particularly. That, that one with the milk bottles on oh, the yes. doorstep, you know? Yes. I'd like to buy that one. That's number seven. Sorry, not for sale. Oh. Of course, your drawings are marvel. Only what? Well, it depends on what you want to be. I thought it was a painter. So did I. Goya's drawing was pretty good. He painted rather well, too, I always thought. In the first year, I doubt it. Well, I wasn't aware that it took a definite length of time. And living in cities all your life. Oh, you know. I suppose I should hire me to some Sylvan Dell. I don't think it would hurt a bit. Well, if you can show me a purer cobalt blue than the winter sky over the East River in the afternoon at 4 o'clock... But I... now you're just being bullheaded. Bullheaded? Me? Me bullheaded? Well... Well, what more, teacher? All I've said and all I'm saying is that you can't expect the first crack out of the box. To... You've got to work, Daisy. Work? Now he's telling me to work. Great heaven, what have I done else but? But differently, with such pains. You're turning out too much and you know it. Maybe. Maybe anything's too much. Oh, darling. No, don't soften on me. Stay tough. Well, I do believe that's it. I, th I think that's the whole story still hung over from the old job. Pressure, pressure all the time. Still rushing countless sketches through against a magazine's deadline. Anyhow, against some deadline. Daisy, darling. Who but you, Tom? Who but you and strangers, honest with me ever? Daisy. Have you missed me, Daisy? You? Well, I'll tell you about that. You see, it's this way. I... Much. Skunk. Skunk. Oh, what are you? It's a lot of nonsense. This is ridiculous. We need each other, we two do. You think? Most terribly, I'm convinced of it. They're never were such friends as you and me. You know, it's, it, it's wicked to give that up, to lose anything so precious for no good reason. Why you, of all people, for a shabby, low-down question of convention, fit on to be considered by shabby, low-down... Oh, well, now, wait a minute. A hundred please. times I'd have given my eyes to see you, just to talk to you. Well, here I am. Daisy. <laughs> May I come and see you just now and then? If you like, just now and then. My sweet dear, thanks. But no, sweet dear. That belongs to another life. Years and years and years ago. I see. There are to be rules, are there? One or two. One very definite one. What? Never secret. Never hidden. Why should a friendship be hidden? What's there to hide? Well, it does get misunderstood. It can't. It won't, or the whole world's rotten. <laughs> it's been pretty ripe for a long time, Tommy. Tommy. Oh, darling, how grand this is. Kiss the boy, Daisy. No, you, you've got to go. Why, will, will it take long? <laughs> there. Oh, magnificent. All as before. Yes, except for one thing. What? We're not in love anymore. Now run. Hmm. Oh, listen. How about lunch tomorrow? Lunch? Yeah. The old place? Oh, I'd love it. One o'clock? Fine. And, and let's dine at John Donovan's. Dine? He, yes, he's opened a new place on 48th Street. All right. Yes, and then let's see, Wednesday's the next day. I said I'd drive out and see Pat Atkins. He's been sick again. Oh, poor dear, I didn't know. He's better now. Come with me, Daisy. Oh, oh Wednesday. Come Wednesday, on, no, and no, if it's no. a fine day, we'll take a picnic. What do you say? Oh, you... Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and listen, Thursday, Thursday, I'm at the press all day, but Friday... Oh, well, now, wait a minute. Friday, you said now... I, I, I bring Hal Foster in about 4 o'clock on Friday. Will you be here? Oh, I suppose so. <laughs> Goodbye, then, darling. Till tomorrow. Tomorrow. What about this afternoon? This af yes, what about, how about a cocktail at Jean's place at five o'clock? Oh, the... okay. all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then. Goodbye, then. Bye. Sweet dear. Five o'clock. 
Ten minutes to five. Well, what is not my business? I... It's Tom. I'm going away, a long way away. I love him, Frank. I love him more than I ever did. But think, Daisy, wait. Are you wise? I'm going alone. Yes, that is wise. And nobody to know where I've gone, either. No, of course not. No mess, Frank, is to avoid when I'm going. But compose yourself, Daisy. Be calm. Oh, I can't. Does he love you? I don't know. I don't think he knows. Oh, Frank, he's so slim and brown and sandy. Now snap out of it, Daisy. And he'll always be like that. I know he will, even when he's old. In a funny way he stands, so sort of stiff with his feet turned out. What they call duck-footed, eh? No, certainly not. It's a perfectly natural way to stand. <laughs> of course. It's a fine, strong way to stand. Oh, yes, I know. But don't forget your watercolors. Huh? No. Oh. Frank, maybe if I wait. Maybe I'd better see him once more and explain Daisy, to him. if you want to go at all, you must go tonight. Yes, I, I guess you're right. Come along, come. Yes, now, come in here, help me. And look. Yes? You know that painting of the doorstep, the one with the milk bottles, number seven? Yeah, Lipchen, yeah. Well, will you wrap it up and take it to him for me with my love? Take it? Oh, yes, yes, you're having cocktails with him at Jean's in one hour at five o'clock. Five o'clock? Ten minutes to five. And Frank? Yes, darling? When you see him, kiss him for me. What? Kiss him for me. Kiss him for me. Daisy. up a chair, I'll tell the missus you're here. You're too kind. Huh. Ain't seen you since I've been back. No. Been back a month. Gee, it's swell. I dare say. Yeah. Will you have some tea, Father? No, thank you, my dear. No, thank you. By the way, his birthday's on the 23rd. I think it would be well to have it a surprise party. Have all his old friends. Uh, give him a chance to realize he's outgrown them. And I hope you may be able to persuade him to move into town with me this winter. Must be uncomfortable for you out here. Father, I'd so love being in town with you. But you know how Tom feels. I'm very contented here. Mm, there's something besides contentment. Of course. How, how did that, that desperado Regan get back here? Oh, Tom ran into him somewhere. Seems a new job didn't pan out. Regan was ill, so Tom asked if he might bring him back. I said he might. Oh, well, why not just give him something, anything to get rid of him? Don't worry about it, Father. I'll work it out somehow. I have the greatest confidence in you, my dear. Mm. Thank you. Well, I, I guess I must be getting back to town. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mm. Operator, long distance? I want to get the number of Miss Daisy Sage in New York. Yeah? Just a minute. Connecticut calling you. Oh, this is Miss Sage. Oh, yes, Miss Sage. 
Allow me to introduce myself. I am Mrs. Thomas Collier. Uh, Mrs. Thomas Collier? I'm so sorry we haven't met. Oh, isn't it a shame? All of Tom's friends hereabouts are so regretted not knowing you. I called to tell you his father and I are giving a surprise party for him here on the 23rd. You possibly remember it's his birthday. Why, no, I, uh... We'd so love having you and Miss Schmidt and Mr. Fisk for the party. And if possible, spend the night. The 23rd? Oh, no, isn't that too bad? Oh, I'm terribly sorry, but I, I just couldn't possibly make it on the 23rd. Oh, I'm frightfully disappointed. We must try again sometime. Soon. Yes. Goodbye. Now, what was that? What? Mrs. Thomas. Thomas, mind you, Collier. Wants to know if I won't surprise her, surprise Tom on his birthday and spend the night with them in the country. She's going to ask you and Frank, too. And what did you say? Well, you heard me, didn't you? Well, look, Daisy. Ever since your trip to Nova Scotia, you've made Tom feel that you don't want to see him. And so he's cut himself off from, well, from all of us. He's only trying to do what he thinks you wish. Well, I don't propose... Mrs. Thomas Collier invited me down there for some very good reason of her own. Well, don't take it out on Tom. I think it'll do him a lot of good. He needs it. He needs us. Well, if he's so weak... Oh, he isn't. Just bewildered. If he could get back just now and then with the right people, it might help him get a decent point of view again. Oh, Joe, I love that boy. With all my heart. Then don't go. I would like to find out if something I think is true is true. I certainly would. May I look up the number for you, Miss Sage? Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Fisk. I think that by making a tremendous effort, I, I may be able to recall it. Uh, long distance, please. Brandy, ma'am. Red. No, thanks. Yes, thanks. The boss has got you reading his new book. Uh-huh. Forget it. Join the party. You might get some laughs. Oh, it's a nice party. Not like we used to have, though. Shh. I don't know hardly anybody here. Don't you, Red? Oh, Red, why don't you get Tom to introduce you? <laughs> <laughs> Well, of course, I know very little about music, but um, I know what I like. That's for the boss. Oh, sorry. We're so anxious to hear you play, Miss Schmidt. I, uh, I'm sure you're better than the radio. But I didn't bring my cello. Oh, what a pity. Perhaps we could get one. She's used to her own fiddle. <laughs> yes, but is there any difference? Yes, I suppose there is. Yeah. Look what baby brought you. Well, he is quaint. Indeed. He devastates me. Pretty good actor. Try and act like a butler, will you? Right, sir. I knows me place, sir. Don't lay it on, Meadows. Oh, no, sir. Say, mm -hmm. how does it feel to be 32, baby? Uh, sir? Uh, I, I, I'm bearing up. Brandy, sir? Thank you, sir. 
No, thanks. Try it. I did. The results were very satisfactory. No, thank you. Get out. Get out. Very good, sir. Oh, Joe. Hmm? This is awful tripe. What? This, um, rotten egg about to be laid by the Bantam Press. Yeah, I know. But it'll make money. Is that all he ever thinks about nowadays? Yeah, apparently so. I have an idea he thinks he's doing me a favor, publishing my book. Oh, he doesn't. He couldn't. Well, he kind of gave us a works at dinner. Well, I imagine he rather gathered we didn't approve of him. We don't. Got to do something about it, Joe. Yeah, but... He kind of hinted that he might hook up with those pirates Williamson Warren. Oh, no. Yes. Why do you suppose she asked us out here anyway? Just to prove we don't belong? Oh, she isn't a bad sort. You know, I had quite a long talk with her tonight. She seems like a very nice, attractive woman. Mm. So did Delilah. Yeah, so did Delilah. Ah, Miss Sage, we were wondering where you were. Oh. Hmm. Hello there, Mr. Fisk. I suppose you've made a good plot tonight. A plot? Hmm. Uh, did I make any plots tonight? Any... Oh, no, not so far as I know. Well, I, I mean for your new novel. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, I know you write her men. I bet you're going to use us all for characters. Oh, that's a very good idea. Thanks. Not at all. Come on, everyone's playing games in the dining room. Oh, I'm still reading this thing. Oh. Isn't it too divine? I think it's going to be a sensation. I'm practically a collaborator, aren't I, Tom? Yes, and Grace is my reaction agent. She, she submits to tests. I love to. <laughs> yeah, she's my little guinea pig. Um, shall we go and play backgammon, Mr. Fisk? Well, yes, I'd, I'd love to. Well, how are you getting on with the book? Look, is this on the Bantam's new list you told me to wait for? Don't you like it? Well, it seems awfully... bright. Well, <laughs> bright things seem to sell. Yeah. Look at those great publishers, Williamson Warren. They sell millions of copies in drugstores. What difference does it make? Where they sell them? None. Except, if you want to keep your integrity, you... Well, you, you can't go in for mass production, can you? I, I mean, you can't just become a, a little cog in the big machinery, can you? Well, uh, don't let's argue about that. Oh, why not? Daisy, listen, I, I want never to... Never mind, never mind. I, I just shouldn't have said anything at all until I'd read it through. That book will make money. Money? Is that so awfully important? I haven't got any, but you know, I feel, I feel quite all right. Well, you're not a married man. No. No, I, I suppose that does make a difference. Well, Daisy, please read the thing through and give me your opinion. I... I'm not quite sure about it. You will, won't you? Oh, yes, Tom. And... And just bear in mind that, uh, well, you can't please everybody. Why did she come? Who? That woman. Oh, I thought you asked her. First she said she couldn't, and then she telephoned back she would. Well... Oh, I'm not the least bit jealous anymore. In fact, I'm inclined to like her. That's big of you, see. Suppose that Joe's one of hers, too. How, how do you mean? Oh, sweet innocent. No, how's that? I should think you'd know by now that she was just a promiscuous little... Oh, well. You're a strange girl, see. And a pretty cruel one, too. Not at all. In fact, I don't see why Tom and she shouldn't be just as good friends as... well, as you and I are. 
Their history is a little different. Why? Don't you like our history? What there is of it? Trifle uneventful, don't you think? Or should we simply call it lacking in excitement? You've been so strange lately. So remote. I wasn't aware of it. Refusing to help us sell Tom's press to Williamson Warren. But Tom... Tom doesn't want to be helped. I do. Good heavens, darling. I've told you a dozen times I'm counsel for them. So they do exactly as you tell them. Hang it all, see. Tom doesn't want to sell the bandit. Tom doesn't know what he wants. Just one little word from you. Well, you know, there's a thing called legal ethics. There's a thing called friendship. Owen. Lacking in excitement, you said. For you? For you, I meant. And I suppose you're the judge of that, too. Well, I don't know who else. And of course, you couldn't possibly be wrong. Could I? And I'm not a human being at all. Of course. See. See. You will do this one thing for me. Just one word to Williamson and Warren. Owen. Yes. You darling. Oh, Miss Sage. Owen and I have been discussing something that might interest you. He's promised to use his influence to have Williamson Warren take over the Bantam Press. Isn't that splendid? Did Tom... Well, is it all settled? Owen's arranged it. You see, he's their lawyer. Isn't that nice of him? Well, if there's any credit due, I'm sure it's Cecilia's. Oh, yes, I, I'm sure it is. Will you excuse me? I... I, I was just looking for Miss Schmidt. Frank, Joe. Look, do you mind going in tonight? But why, Daisy? Oh, we were supposed to spend the night. Yes, I know we were, but I, I've just got to get out of this house. Oh, but Daisy. No, we are going. Get your things together. Okay. Okay, gee, that's when the party's getting good. Uh -uh. <laughs> so sorry, Mrs. Collier, it just can't be helped. Are you ready, Joe? Yes. Goodbye, thank you very much. Goodbye, Tom. Goodbye. I must say, your leaving seems very strange, and we've so loved having you. You were very kind to Goodbye, ask us. Goodbye, Tom. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs. Collier. Goodbye. Come again when you can really stay. Thank you. I'll see about the car. Well, all so solemn. Sorry you don't like my friends. You are... They are, however. Sorry you don't like the book I'm publishing. Tom, I pity you with all my heart. Pity me? What are you talking about? I came to find out, and I found out. Now I'm going. Found out what? Pity me, why? Do you mind? Daisy, I... Give us a kiss, Daisy. Hey, Daisy. Hurry up, or we'll miss the train. Come on, here's your coat. Get in. You must give us a ring sometime, Tom. Right. I'll wait for you outside. Goodbye, Tom. Once I wouldn't say it, would I? Once you wouldn't. Well, goodbye. This time you do. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, good night, my dear. Had a lovely time. Good. Bless you. <laughs> good night, Tom. Good night, Father. Goodbye, Father. Well? Oh, yes. Why you decline to spend the winter in town with your father is... Is what? You must simply wish to be disagreeable. That isn't true. Oh, come on, see. Now, let, let's forget it. As if that were so easy. And I suppose you refuse to sell the press, even if Williamson Warren are willing to pay twice what it's worth. I don't... I, I don't know. Can't we talk about something else tonight? I'm afraid not. Hello, Steve. You're frightfully late, darling. I stopped at the Bantam. What made you do that, silly? I don't know. I, I just wanted to think. Try to clear my mind of the vision of millions and millions of cheap books. Williamson's recital of the glories of the machine age. So I stopped at the press. Everything went all right, didn't it? Oh, yes, perfect. In fact, it's settled. Not already. Yes, they've signed. All I have to do now is dig up a notary in the village and write my name under theirs. Oh, Tom. Are you pleased? Aren't you? I don't know. I, I think something's happened to my nervous system. I, I feel awfully light. Of course. You're famished, darling. Come and eat. Would you like to eat in my sitting room? All right. I'll call Regan. See. Yes, dear. I think it's time we had a child or two, see? We'll talk about that. We must. You all ready, Tom? I thought it would be so cozy, us dining here. What's the matter? It's funny. You know, lighted this way, it, it reminds me of some place. What place? I don't know. Champagne, is it? I thought you'd feel like celebrating. Well, well. A little wine won't hurt you. The little more and how much it is. Fill him, Mr. Regan. Infinite riches in a little room. You've got the quotes badly. Little lamb who made thee. Regan, dost thou know who made thee? What is it it reminds me of? And a little more, old son. The discreet withdrawal. I've seen that before, too. I know, the Florentine. A private room at the Florentine. What's that? That's a sort of hotel. Run by a woman called Flora Conover. Sounds wicked. Yeah, it used to be the best place in London. Place? What sort of place? 20 guineas. 20 guineas? On the mantelpiece. What are you talking about? In advance at that. Rather expensive, wasn't it? Well, one went to Flora's to celebrate, and the food was good, the waiter discreet, the wine excellent, the lady most artful. I don't care to hear about it, thank you. 
See, your eyes are so bright. Ah, uh, eat you. You're seeing things. See? Yes, dear. You know, a little love is no love. Meaning what, precisely? It wasn't necessary to lock your door against me last night. But I didn't. I mean, not against... Then why? Tell me instantly why it was. Is that an order? Tell me. You mean, why I didn't want you near me? Yes. You've been so consistently disagreeable, that's all. About what? Why wanting Regan back? That's one thing. Well, what else, then? Your father, chiefly. Ah. What are you going to do about your birthday check, Tom? Well, che oh, that. Well, I, uh, I don't know whether to send it back or just not to cash it. Of course, you simply can't allow yourself to show any graciousness toward him. No. As a way of telling you how pleased with you he is, he gives you a small check and you have the extraordinary bad taste. What? Good heavens. I can't believe it. There it is. There isn't that much money in the world. In Father's world, there is. He fears he can afford it to get us to come and live with him. Of course, I can't understand your attitude about that either. Can't you see? No. He knows how inconvenient it is here in the winter. And having that great, huge, lovely house in town is perfectly sweet and natural of him to ask us. Well, to ask. Yes, you, to preside night after night at his deadly dinners. Me to listen eternally to his Delphic advice on what to do and how to live. To give up what little integrity I have left. In short, to allow him to own us. Of course he's willing to pay. He always is. How you can be so hard about him, I don't know. My way of thinking of a person... Oh, let's drop it, see. Very well, we shall. Now you've gone from me again. Lot, you care. Oh, see, my lovely see, where are you? What's become of you? The thing you call your integrity. That's the word. See, it's no use talking. This is what you call being disagreeable, I suppose. Yes, very. But how to be otherwise when... Possibly by being the fine, kind, generous man you ought to be. Accept the cheque with thanks and, and go and live with him. It's only for a few months. I think to refuse his present would be extremely bad manners. Just about in a class with those of your little ex-sweetheart. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean... Never mind. See. Suppose I should do as you say about father. Oh, Tom. Do be the darling I know you are. Would you like me better? Much. How much? Oh, very much. No locked doors anymore? Not one, ever. Sounds most inviting. Does it? And suddenly I'm beginning to see with an awful clearness. What? How stupid you've been. And what I am to you. Yes. So you are going to be nice again. You'll see. Oh, I want so to feel, I don't know, together again, as we used to be. You're very pretty, you know. Oh, thank you, sir. Very exciting, too. I don't know whether it's you or the wine speaking. Oh, me? me through the wine. Shall we have a little more? I think so. It's a party, then. It's a party. We'll have another small bottle. Hmm? There's some here. Sometimes you're so thrilling, Tom. You think? We shouldn't. You know we shouldn't. But uh, we seem to be. <laughs> All at once, I feel terribly naughty somehow. You know, I suppose you're one of the most... the prettiest girls I've ever seen. So nice of you to think so, sir. So very attractive. I like to be attractive. So very alluring. <laughs> there, that's enough. You're a strange woman. 
Your lips drop honeycomb. Your mouth is smoother than oil. Now what are you quoting? Ah, the discreet waiter returns. <laughs> Come in. Give, give the lady some, waiter. Ah, uh, you can leave the bottle on the table. And that'll be all. <sighs> to the pleasant ways of life. Such pleasant ways. It's good, isn't it? So good. I'm beginning to feel it a little. <laughs> well, that's what it's for, right? Eh? It must be. <laughs> <laughs> Champagne, the friend of lovers. No, not yet. Artful child. <laughs> you think? Lovely, alluring thing. I like you too now. Mm -hmm. This is pleasant here, isn't it? So pleasant. But you're not taking any. No. It makes me see almost too clearly. Oh, take a little more. And everything will get so, so lovely and vague in the way I feel now. Mm -hmm. A good feeling, is it? Delicious. Yeah. Oh, Tom. One last toast. Do we dare? Come on. But to what? What to? You name it. To love. And darling. Yes? You are going to be an angel about things, aren't you? You'll see. I knew you would. I'm so happy. I want you close to me. Don't be long. Come in. See here, Red, I... Uh... Never mind. All I mean is, well, I'm out for good this time. Why? I just don't like it here, that's all. When you want to go? As soon as I can. Tonight, then? That's all right with me. I'm packed. Wait downstairs. Oh, Red. You got a fountain pen? Thanks. Don't let me forget to return it.
on the mantelpiece. Oh, here you are, Ed. Thanks. Well, goodbye. Go and get in the car. I can walk to the train, all right. Bring my hat and coat. Will you bring my hat and coat, please? What's the idea? Light, please. Now then. I can walk, I tell you. Not at all. We'll drive in. We will. I'm going back to my wife, Red. To your... My wife, I said. <laughs> 